right, so we're going to do a pod review today on that pepper right there, and that is called the Ahi Amarillo. A lot of people ask me about this pepper, and I do grow it quite often, but not often enough. One of the reasons why I don't really grow this pepper too much is for some reason, certain insects attack this particular variety of pepper a lot. It's probably very aromatic and very floral and, and like essence and smell and pl and the insects smell that and they come and they attack this plant as you can see I got a number of pods here most of them are destroyed now this is a good pod this is a good pod that's actually a good pod and that one's a good pod that's strange it's making a liar out of me but as you can see here and I'll pick this particular one This is very common with this particular variety of pepper. With me, anyway. With you guys, it's probably different. But I get this a lot of times. Usually 30, 40, 50% of the plant is pretty much destroyed because of a certain type of insect that likes to eat the peppers off that plant and just destroy my crops. So I don't do as good with it because of that reason. But if you grow this plant outside, I can certainly assure you the the amount of peppers that come off of that plant is absolutely unbelievable. You will get two, three dozen of peppers like that off that particular variety of pepper. The ahi amarillo is a very highly productive variety, and I do recommend actually growing it. Just don't grow it the way I grow it because, I don't know, I have no room to grow this many peppers, and I do it anyway. But let's pick this one. <coughs> I just broke the whole plant. That was stupid. That's all right, though. This, this, this is all got to come down anyway, guys. I can't leave any of this. It's all got to go. Everything in here has got to go within the next two or three days, so I got to cut most of this down. And uh, there's still plenty of pods on here, isn't there? See, this time of the year, uh, these, these plants become extremely brittle. And they break, it's, even if you just move them too much, they'll snap like it's glass. So, anyway, here it is. The Ahi Am Morillo. Now, a lot of websites out there will tell you that this pepper is the same thing as the Ahi Verde, which is this. These are absolutely two different varieties of peppers. You can see the Ahi Verde... It basically is shorter okay they're not the same thing the ahi amarillo is an orange variety the ahi verde is a red variety they are not the same thing the ahi amarillo has a nice point on the end of the pepper the ahi verde has like a nose on it so they are not the same pepper please do not confuse that on your websites, if you're the ones that are putting out there and saying the Ahi Amarillo is the same as the Ahi Verde, please change that information because it is very much incorrect. And I had spoken to other pepper uh, enthusiasts like myself who can confirm that information. So, anyway, that's it, guys. Let me turn you around and uh, we'll give it a go. Alright guys, we're doing another pond review today. It's going to be on this nice little pepper here, and that's called the Ahi Amarillo. And I have done reviews in the past, but I think I'm going to pull those videos down, and then that way we can keep this video as our current video of the Ahi Amarillo. So, again, I mentioned this in the past video on the Ahi Verde, a lot of people seem to confuse the Ahi Verde with the Ahi Amarillo, and they say they're the same thing, like people say Ancho Chili and Poblano are the same thing. They are not the same thing. Somebody decided to name the Ancho Chili the Ancho Chili, even though Ancho in Spanish means something else, but somebody decided to name a specific type of cultivar as Ancho Chili instead of naming it something else, so it didn't create all that confusion. Yeah, created a lot of confusion. The same thing is happening with this and the Ahi Verde. They are not the same pepper in any way. They are two different cultivars. Please, if you do have that on your website as one cultivar, change that because they are not the same thing. They are different. The Ahi Verde gets red. This one stays orange. Ahi Verde has a little blunt nose on the end. This one has a pointy type of hook nose on there. So they are not the same thing. Please change that. So anyway, here it is. 
Yahi Amarillo, and I've done reviews on this in the past, and I don't remember how hot it is, but I do remember these have some heat on them. So I am prepared. I did drink a cup of cream before I'm doing these reviews, and uh, hopefully we don't get a gut cramp, because sometimes I get gut cramps even on a lower heat things. It's just the way it hits my stomach. So anyway, here it is. Let's give it a go. Very sweet. That first bite, when I first bit into it, is like biting into a candy bar. That thing was sweet. Very, very sweet. Um, there's nothing off-putting about this pepper in any way. No tanginess, no... It, it's just a... It has a picadum flavor, because it is a picadum. So it has that picadum flavor, and there's a picadum type of fruitiness or floral tone that comes with it. You can really pick that up with this pepper. These peppers are awfully sweet, though. Uh, the Amarillos are a lot sweeter than probably most of the other Bacadums combined. So this one would happen to be very, very sugary and very sweet, very delectable. I really did enjoy biting that last piece. It does have heat on it, but it's generally pretty low. So what does it taste like? Well, it has the typical Bacadum flavor, but this particular one, and that sugary sweetness when you first bite it, was like biting into a candy bar. That's really the best way I could put it. It's very, very sweet. And then it follows up with the heat starts to come in, but very low. And then um, it just has a nice mellowing effect on you. That flavor is not very spicy, but it does kind of stick around a little bit after you eat it on your palate. So you can still savor that flavor for a little bit. But it's a very nice type of pepper. I'm really big on the Amarillos. A lot, in fact, a lot of people are requesting this seed in bulk from my website. And I just don't simply have, I'll outsource the seed for it, but I don't have it in bulk. I don't actually stock that much of this pepper because it's it's just not, I got too many varieties to stock. I'd have, I'd have to have a warehouse to stock that level of seed. But it's a great pepper and I really like that flavor. So let's talk a little about the heat. The heat on it, again, it's a bacadum. Bacadums, so far, most of the bacadums I've been doing this year, they all seem to be in a lower heat range or not very hot. It's a typical bacadum type of burn. It's a very glowing, smooth, warm type of burn. It's not stingy. It's nothing unpleasant about it. It's affecting the very tip of my tongue very, very lightly. A little bit on the top of the tongue very lightly. It's heating up the lips very slightly a little bit on the gums and it's mostly affecting the tonsil area in the back that's really where it is but again it's not a stinging effect it's a very warm glowing type of burn it's a very very nice burn actually if I was to put this one on a Scoville it's not very high I would have to say probably around 2000 you might bring that number up possibly because I have eaten these in the past and there were some more heat on them but this particular one <coughs> 2000 is pushing it but again they can go up in heat depending on how you grow it where you grow it, what you're feeding it how you're stressing the plant capsaicin is a protective mechanism that the plant produces this compound so it can protect the plant somehow so whether it's being attacked by insects or animals or people it will ramp up its capsaicin production because of that reason. That's why stressing your plant, you'll get more capsaicin. So this plant was under virtually no stress, so it's just virtually not going to make as much capsaicin as it would if I were to really stress it out. Pick on the leaves, start yanking the leaves, break some of the branches. Things like that will cause this plant to get suddenly start getting hotter. So can it get hotter? Yes, it depends on how it's stressed, how you grow it, and things like that. But this one was around 2,000. Not sure of what they can actually get to. But even if it did get a little warm, it's not going to be bad, guys. It's not like eating a super hot Chianti's where your stinging heat you get from that. Not the same thing. So what about this pepper that sticks out the most? Well, the color, first of all, because it's nice and orange. But really, the sweet flavor that comes out when you first eat it, that's the most pronounced part of this whole pepper is that sweet flavor. It's just really really sweet with that rich aromatic bacadum type floral flavor 
it's really rich and it really pronounced in this pepper. So that's really the biggest thing that stands out with this pepper the most, if you ask me. Have I dried these and know what they're like as a dried powder or flake? No, I haven't. Or if I did, I got mixed with other peppers. But if I get enough of these, I do plan on drying them out and experimenting with them because I really do like the flavor of this pepper. So that's it for your pod review on the Ahi Amarillo. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.